As far as equipment, I mean, here's the basic rule. I mean, <laughs> there really is no basic rule. When it gets down to this, ultimately, what is truly going to work for yourself? And that's really the bottom line as far as anything else. What works for me may not work for you, and what works for the person next to you may not work for me. Um, so with that in mind, it's basically a very expensive trial and error period if you really haven't discovered your sound. Um, for example, I knew ultimately that I wanted to you know, I knew the basic sound I was going for. I wanted a, you know, fairly distorted sound that was pretty easy to play, but at the same time I wanted it clean so that you could hear the difference between all the chords. For example, if I do, you know, if I'm playing a chord and I drop down a note, I want to be able to hear it. I wanted something that was very crunchy and yet clean for um, rhythms, but at the same time had the punch and was able to get through with the leads, and that was also something that was important, kind of, um, kind of one of the best of both worlds. Now, not only did I want to kick through with the leads, kind of like... <laughs> And um, not only did I want it to cut through with the leads, but I also wanted uh, to be very smooth at times, yet very abrasive at other times. For example, I wanted it to be punchy enough to cut through for a rhythm thing, so it's kind of like... But at the same time, I wanted it to be ultra smooth, and I wanted a very kind of smooth, warm neck pickup sound. And at the same time, I had to kind of find a way to, at the, you know, when I turned the setup down. I also wanted it to go clean. So as you can see, I don't rely on anything else with the exception of what I have at my hands. And just out of pure necessity, it works best for me. Um, so the way I kind of figured out was, uh, first I had to figure out what kind of guitar I wanted to play, and that brings me to my guitar. The guitar I'm playing is a, a Samick, and it's a um, brand new guitar that I pretty much custom made by myself. What I did is I sat at home and drew out exactly what I wanted and this is actually a prototype and the model, there is going to be a model, a series actually of guitars coming out and it's a little bit different this, than this one. It's got an extended piece here and it's got a couple body contours but this is the very very first prototype and basically what it is is the body's made of alder which is a pretty warm pretty smooth wood that works really good for you know what I wanted. The neck is made out of maple and I wanted it for the bite. It kind of really helps, especially for cording. Um, I use very big frets, huge frets, like jumbo frets, pretty much. And the reason being is because so much of my sound comes from my uh, left hand anyway, so I figured, you know, it just makes it a lot easier to bend. I remember, like, 10 years ago when they, um, when I first started playing, they had uh, guitars with really small frets. So it was really hard to bend. So I've got pretty big, like almost like Jim Dunlop 6100s on here. Um, I use two humbuckers, and I've just always pretty much used it. I've experimented with single coils, and it never really worked for the type of sound that I wanted to go for, um, which was a pretty straightforward rock and roll sound. And ultimately, I'm running two humbuckers. Um, they're Seymour Duncan pickups, and what it is, it's a custom model pickup that I have out. Um, it's called a blues trembucker. And um, it's wound very close to a PAF, and it keeps the guitar very natural and clean sounding. And that's something that really helps a lot because if you just if you have a totally distorted sound coming from your guitar it's hard to get anything clean out of it whereas it's a lot easier to make it more distorted so that's how I kind of came about with that um, like like I said I have one volume knob and a three-way switch and it's pretty much wired uh, bridge bridge and the neck because if you watch I always ultimately I'm always switching between these two pickups especially even a lot of uh, in between a lot of licks I'll start off with the bridge pickup <laughs> And I'll kind of start very high on the bridge pickup, work my notes lower, end up on the neck pickup. And what it kind of does, it just almost makes it a greater array of kind of what I'm doing. And it also freaks the sound man out a lot, so, so it's pretty cool to do. Um, uh, another thing about it is that, like I said, I've got a Floyd on this guitar because my style is just kind of revolved around playing with tremolos. I like them because it allows me to kind of overcompensate for things working with the tremolo. Um, a lot of disadvantages to working with the tremolo also because it'll, um, you know, you, you can't do a lot of the a lot of the bending. It makes the strings go flat a lot of times. But um, you find ways of compensating for that. Sometimes I rest my hand on the bridge. Sometimes, you know, I will just um, play around it almost. And so that's a, a big part of it. And ultimately, all I really do is run um, my guitar straight into my amplifier, which is back there. Um, the amp's a pretty special thing, and that has a lot to do with my sound. And I think a lot of people don't realize that ultimately you are totally, completely, and truly influenced by your sound. For example, if somebody gave me a telly through a clean amp, um, realistically, I'd probably play a lot differently than I do now. And so, which also works well, because a lot of times in the writing process, by working with different uh, 
different pieces of equipment allows me to write different songs, and so I kind of get inspired by different guitars and different pieces of equipment because it throws you in a different mood um, and allows you to play differently. But ultimately, the amp is a pretty special thing. It's an amp that my father actually custom made for me. It's um, a Dirty Boy amplifier. It's one of a kind. And basically, the, the story behind the amp, it's a very simple principle that's kind of been um, taken to the, to, to the farthest region of what we could do. Um, I always liked distortion, but I always used to use older amps where I would turn them up and let the power section really work, more so than the preamps. Everybody today has got these huge racks with all these preamps and stuff, and um, that's how they get their sound. Mine's pretty much backwards. I get my sound mostly from the power amp, and the preamp um, has less to do with it. So ultimately, what you'll see on the back of that amp, if you can zoom up on it, um, is that there's a big knob. And what that knob ultimately does is control the voltage, but in a much different way than a standard Variac controls it. Um, I guess your regular amplifier, a lot of people take their amp, plug it into a Variac, and try and achieve the same sound. And the amp was designed that only certain part of the amps work on that control. And it's basically a very complex thing that ultimately just allows the guitar to sound great. You'll notice I've got it down to about 40, which means I'm probably running at about, I don't know, maybe 60 volts right now. But um, the amp is excruciatingly loud, and it's also probably the most versatile amp I've ever worked with. So especially on my um, third solo record hair pick, you'll you'll definitely be hearing the amplifier. And um, like I said, this is the stuff that I use, and the reason why I use it, you know, is pretty much very simple. It's my trial and error has pretty much led me to kind of work with that. I know that in a clinch, you know, situation where everything is failing, these two things always come out the same. I like really big necks on guitars, and I like amplifiers that are really loud and pretty clean, yet distorted enough to really rock out. So. Um, and that's what my experience has led me to believe. Um, the best way, the best advice I could ever give you is realistically, um, you're going to have to pretty much go through that process yourself and decide whether you're going to work with single coils or, you know, humbuckers or where you want to place it. And like I said, just keep in mind that there there is no rule. The most expensive guitar is not by far not necessarily the best guitar for you. You have to decide ultimately what's.